Hello, this is Michael from Fab Lab El Paso. In this lesson, we will dive into one of my favorite machines here at the lab, the laser cutter. We have two laser cutters that we use for various client projects, one desktop machine for our mobile Fab Lab and a full-size pro model in our workshop. The beauty of lasering is its versatility, from scoring and etching on paper to cutting through woods and plastics and even cutting through metals with more powerful machines. The creative possibilities are endless. I found it interesting to know that LASER is actually an acronym for the science that's going on behind the scenes. It stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation and had its roots in Albert Einstein's quantum theory of radiation. However, lasers as we know them today weren't perfected until years later in the 1960s. The basic anatomy of a laser machine starts with the laser tube. Laser tubes vary in power and are rated in watts and typically range from 5 to 120 watts. Our desktop machine is 40 watts and the workshop model is 90. This allows us to have greater versatility in the materials and projects that we are able to process. The laser tube is filled with compressed CO2 gas, which is excited by passing electricity through the tube. As the energy is built up, it exits one end of the tube as high intensity infrared light. This light is then bounced off a series of mirror relays that redirect the light from the tube down to the focusing head. Within the focusing head, there is an optical lens which focuses and concentrates the beam of light into a pinpoint, just like using a magnifying glass to focus the sun's light for use as a fire starter in survival situations. This concentrates the infrared light and allows the beam to cut or engrave. There are different types of lenses that focus the concentrated beam of light for a finer beam for doing tiny detailed work or a wider beam for cutting thicker material. Within the head, there is also a connection for an air assist tube that is connected to an air compressor. This compressed air is pushed through the same nozzle in the same channel as the laser exits. The air assist helps cool the material, preventing flare-ups. In industrial machines, the air is replaced with other gases, such as nitrogen, to facilitate the cutting process like using a mixed gas torch to cut metals. Laser cutters fall into a category of CNC machine, or computer numerical control. They use a gantry and a motor system that allows the laser head to move to any position along the X and Y axis. The bed has a separate motor system that allows you to position the material to the right distance from the focus lens. This allows you to cut thin materials like paper and plastic films or engrave objects up to six inches deep. However, for cutting, you are limited to about half an inch thick materials with our 90 watt laser tube. The bed is comprised of a thin honeycomb frame that allows the laser to pass through the material and dissipate downward. The back of the machine has an exhaust port that can either be vented outside or through a filter system. Lastly, laser cutters have a water chiller that pumps cool water through the laser tube to help dissipate the heat that is generated during the process to prevent the tube from overheating and cracking. Now that you are familiar with our machines, let's walk through setting up a job. There are three basic operations that laser cutters do. Raster engraving, vector cutting, and vector engraving. Raster engraving works like an inkjet printer that moves the laser gantry left and right from top down and fires the laser to match pixel points within the file design. This is great for replicating photos or logo designs. You could import images such as JPEG or PNGs that carry pixel information. Vector cutting and engraving work off of what are called vector lines. You will learn the process of creating vector lines to set up a project for the laser cutter more in depth in the next lesson. 
These files would be .svg or .pdf depending on the laser cutter software. The completed files would be sent from the design software, like printing to a print driver, or simply importing the file to the software. Here I have a file set up for making a laser cut box that will hold the vacuum form piece that you saw earlier in the previous lessons. The vector lines you see in red and blue are what the laser cutter will follow. In our design software, we will be able to designate separate line colors to allow the laser cutter software to differentiate parts of the file that we want different settings for. For example, we will use red to designate cut lines and blue to engrave the paper along the hash lines. We will have a preparation that will allow us to fold the box. We have multiple settings for raster engraving. For rastering, we can adjust the speed and things like DPI or dots per inch that can make our photos more clean while engraving. What differentiates vector cutting and vector engraving would be the speed, power, and current. We typically try to cut as fast as we are able to while adjusting the power settings lower to mark or higher to cut through. Then the current adjusts the pulse of the laser, and this could help reduce charring or burn marks. With these variations of controls, we would designate different color lines to mark, cut, or engrave. After we have set up our file, we'll place our material in the machine and run a perimeter check to help us center our file within the material. Our desktop machine also has a built-in camera that will allow us to capture the work area and easily adjust the file to the material. After we double check the water chiller is running, the fume extraction system is running, and our files are set up appropriately, we will put on our safety glasses and run the job. After the job is completed, it is wise to wait a few moments to allow the fume extractor to remove any excess fumes before opening the lid. We can then remove the material and clean up any leftover pieces that may be left behind. Using the laser cutter requires a bit of training and a lot of practice, especially dealing with new materials and learning how to create design files but the potential possibilities for creating prototypes and functional parts is really limited to your imagination. A little bit of creativity and combining different materials and processes available here at the Fab Lab, such as 3D printing, using hardware and electronics, you too can make almost anything.